Hello and welcome to Chem Mastery with Dr. Z. In this video, I will be explaining the different separation techniques that can be used to separate components of a mixture. So a mixture is formed when two or different elements or compounds are mixed together to form a mixture. There is no chemical bonds between the different components, so they can be separated by simple physical processes. The process of separation will depend on the nature of the mixture. So it could be solid with liquid and you want the solid. The solid itself could be soluble or insoluble in the liquid. And then there could be a liquid. We want to separate the liquid from the solution. And there is also a mixture of liquids. If you want to separate uh, liquids from mixture of liquids or mixture of solids. So each of these will have a different process for separation. So starting off with filtration. Filtration is used to separate insoluble solids from a liquid. In filtration, you would have a conical flask funnel, filter paper, and the mixture of the insoluble solid in a liquid in a beaker can be filtrated through the filter paper where you have the residue, which is the insoluble solid, will remain on the filter paper and the collected liquid and the flask will be the filtrate. This is going to be the uh, solvent or the liquid. And this method is used if you want to separate insoluble solid from a liquid. And then there is evaporation, which is used to separate soluble solid from a liquid. In evaporation, you simply put your solution in an evaporating dish and you heat it using the benzen burner. And then the water will completely evaporate from the solution until complete evaporation of the liquid. Only the solid will remain. So you take it off the benzen burner and then leave it to dry completely and then you can collect your solid. You can also separate a um, soluble solid from a liquid using crystallization. In crystallization, there are several steps. So in the first step, you heat your mixture in the evaporating dish, but only to allow some of the solvent or some of the water to evaporate. Solution will get concentrated. Then you keep heating until the, um, you start to see crystals formed on the sides of the evaporating dish. This is called the point of crystallization. And then you take it off the um, take it off the heating and then leave it for to cool and more crystals will be formed. Once the crystals are completely formed, then step three will be simple filtration where you separate the crystals formed as a filtrate, um, sorry, as a residue on the filter paper while the filtrate will contain mainly the solvent. If you have mixture of solids and you want to separate them, you can separate them based on the nature of their solubility. So an example of that is to separate components of rock salt. So rock salt is a mixture of sand and salt. Salt is sodium chloride, and these are two solids. The sand is insoluble in water, while the salt, which is sodium chloride, is soluble in water. So the first step is to grind them together grind them well, make sure that they have small particle size, and then you start to dissolve in the mixture in water and heat it. Um, the heating here is important because we can make sure that all the soluble salt dissolves in water. In this case, we will only have a solution of the salt in water while the uh, sand will remain undissolved at the bottom of the beaker. So to separate the first solid, which is the sand, you use simple filtration where the residue contains the insoluble sand while the filtrate will contain the salt solution. Now we have a solution of a salt which is soluble and the uh, solvent. So you can simply separate the second one from the solution using crystallization. What if we want to separate the liquid, not the solid? The first method uh, we can use is the sample distillation. 
Sample distillation is mainly used if you want to separate a liquid from a solution, especially if the solution contains only one uh, solvent and contains a solid, but you want the liquid here, not the solid. The sample in sample distillation, you have your solution in a round bottom flask, and then you heat it using benzene burner. Um, as you heat it, the steam will start to form or the uh, solvent will start to evaporate. And we have a thermometer here at the top. The thermometer will give you the boiling point of your solvent. The, um, the gases formed or the steam formed uh, or the vapors that are formed will pass through a Liebig con condenser. The Liebig condenser contains uh, cooling water where the water goes in from the bottom and goes out from the top. And then you have the vapors as they go through the uh, Liebig condenser, they will start to condense and we have condensing liquid that will be col collected in a receiving flask. So we can collect now the distilled liquid in the receiving flask and the solid will remain in the round bottom flask. And then we have fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is used to separate out a liquid from a mixture of liquids. So if you have several liquids, they have different boiling points, you can use fractional distillation. Fractional distillation uses the same principle as simple distillation, but with a small addition. So you have the mixture of liquids in the round bottom flask, you heat it using benzene burner, and the vapors of the different liquids would start to form. And they go through a fractionating column. A fraction Fractionating column will have a higher temperature at the bottom and will have a lower temperature at the top. Only the liquid, which have the lower boiling point, will uh, continue to go to the top of the uh, fractionating column. And then we have the thermometer will give you the temperature of the liquid or of the substance or of the um, vapors um, that uh, have the lower boiling point. And then this, um, uh, the um, liquid with the lower boiling uh, point will go through the condenser and they will um, uh, be condensed. The Liebig condenser again contains uh, cooling water. Water comes in from the bottom, goes out from the top. And then we have the uh, condensing liquid, which is the one with the lower boiling point first. And this is collected or, dis um, or distilled. We have the collected or distilled water in the receiving flask. So what happens to the other liquids? The other liquids, as they go through the fractionating column, as they go up, they're going to be condensed again and go back into solution. Uh, after we collect the first one, we can then increase the temperature and then the second liquid can be collected.